For this chapter of my ongoing series reviewing the travel wide, I wanted to go over focus calibration. I found it really easy to do, but if you're a visual learner like me, maybe this video will be helpful. So I headed up to the roof where I have a clear view of Manhattan from my building in Brooklyn. As you can see, I decided to bring Spud and have a beer while I'm at it. I'll take pretty much any opportunity to enjoy an IPA with my dog. Even though two given lenses may both be 90mm, their construction and variation can make them slightly different, meaning you have to specifically calibrate each 90 to the travel wide itself. Ben and John at Wonderless Cameras have provided a tool just for this purpose. It was originally going to be a simple ground glass insert, but because of variation in the grain pattern, it really only shows a clear bright spot. Uh, for ground glass composition, this isn't going to work, but for calibration, this is actually quite perfect. Calibration itself does not actually require a rangefinder. It helps if you're unsure whether a distant object is truly at infinity, but generally, if you see something that's real far off, just point your camera at that. If you look at your helical, you'll see a rubber grip with some indicator brackets. For the purpose of calibration, this has to come off. It just peels right out, so you can just pull on it. Once you've done that, open the shutter on your lens. Most modern shutters have a switch for this, but you may need to lock yours open on the bulb setting or the T setting. Of course, your lens also needs to be at its widest aperture. You should note that the ground glass should have the Wanderlust logo facing out so you can feel the raised letters with your fingers. Next, simply apply your mustache to the ground glass itself with your eye to the loop right in the center spot. Focus the camera until it's as sharp as you can make it. I will say that this is one area where I had some difficulty at first. It took me a while to really get confident that I've reached the sharpest point. I would suggest going out on the brightest possible day and focusing on something really contrasty. Once you think that your distant object is as sharp as you can make it, you can put the rubber focus ring back on. Just line up the two brackets with the infinity indicator and slide it around the teeth. It's calibrated because you know via the ground glass that the camera is focused to infinity, and once you place the brackets over that marker, the whole range of possible focus distances fall in line. Now you can use a rangefinder like I do to find your distance, or even just guess the distance and set it on the scale. Keep in mind that the camera's labels are metric. The Blick rangefinder is also metric, so this actually works perfect for me. So that's it. Uh, the whole process was super easy. Later I confirmed my focus by just shooting a target, a color chart, on my fridge in my apartment using a strobe. I used some 4x5 Fuji Provia, and when I got the chrome back from the lab, it was perfectly focused. Um, when, you know, when you normally use a view camera, it can take a lot of time just to set it up and focus under a dark cloth. But this camera, you don't have to do any of that. You just find your distance or guess and set the helical to your range and meter and shoot. It saves so much time. And there's certainly a lot of situations where you might use a travel wide, like as opposed to a view camera. Um, you know, if you want to use like a point and shoot or handheld photography, certainly that's not like normally the area of 4x5. But uh, there's a lot of situations where the travel wide could be used, uh, or a view camera could be used, but you want to use a travel wide instead simply because of the way it's built. I'm talking about long exposure landscapes, seascapes, things like that, and I'm going to talk about those too. Um, I'm a huge photography dork, and for me, making these videos is an amazing amount of fun.